Stick with me, because I know this is very dire news. This whole program is about reality, because we don't have any reality from so many other sources, none. So it's necessary to, to take in the full scope of reality for to have any chance of changing it. I'll get to what we can each do at the end of this program. Bear with me. A new headline from Forbes magazine, the Great Barrier Reef is in its, quote, final terminal stage. This is from Forbes. The Great Barrier Reef is perhaps on its final deathbed as it suffers from back-to-back -back massive dying events in the past two years. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is one of the great natural wonders of the world. Largest living organism in the world, by the way, or was. A tremendous display of beauty, biodiversity, and fragile ecosystems. Now the reef faces mass destruction as a result of warming seas. That's absolutely the case. That's what's killing the coral. And, and this is most important and typically not mentioned from official sources, the reefs are being scorched with massive UV radiation. What's the single greatest cause of the destroyed ozone layer causing that UV radiation? Climate engineering. Not the only source of damage. CFCs, absolutely a problem. Other forms of anthropogenic activity and pollution, a problem. Climate engineering, the biggest problem. No mention of climate engineering from any mainstream source, which must be included if these reports are to be fully credible. And while the planet plummets into full-blown meltdown, the pursuit of more fuel for industrialized society continues. Think of the absurdity of this. Our planet is completely imploding, and the only thing military industrialized society can do is to try to find more resources to further expand its insanity. Now we have, here's a headline. This should make Americans happy, and Donald Trump's make America great again. Saudis now fully own America's biggest oil refinery. S Saudi... Aramco has become 100% owner, 100% of Port Arthur, an oil refinery in Texas. Port Arthur has a capacity of 600,000 barrels per day, making it the biggest in North America. Saudis have also acquired 24 distribution terminals. The Saudi firm, this is Aramco, also got exclusive right to sell shell branded gasoline and diesel in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, goes on and on. DC, eastern half of Texas, and the majority of Florida. Does anyone even question how the Saudis get away with everything? How the Saudis get put on the Human Rights Council while they're bombing the poorest country in the world, Yemen? Mercilessly bombing civilians supported by the U.S. and the U.K.? How the Saudi Arabians are put on the, the Women's Rights Council now as well as the Human Rights Council? And that countries, Western European countries and the U.S. won't disclose the fact that they voted for this to happen? Saudi Arabia, who had all their citizens flown back after 9-11, no questions asked. Doesn't anybody question this? This is the source of oil. It all comes back down to the sources of energy, does it not? The book House of Bush, House of Saud, elaborating on the absolute marriage between the U.S. power structure and the oil in Saudi Arabia. Why is any of this a surprise? What I want you to take from this is to understand that I am being completely honest with you and that geoengineering is occurring, it's been occurring, it is not new, and your tax dollars are funding this. I 100% know that the U.S. Air Force was involved, and it kind of, I think back to all these things that I never had noticed. You don't, if you don't know what to look for, you can't look for something. And once I realized a process they were trying to hide, People have come out of the woodworks, from EPA compliance officers to ex-people that I worked with in my career field. Well, I cannot state for obvious reasons. I've had pilots come forward. I've had people come forward that actually load the canisters on the planes. These people don't come forward because they are afraid that they're going to end up like Snowden. And I continue to speak to let people know I've been screaming about this for three years and I'm still here. And why are you so afraid? Because many of these people are on active duty. And if you are willing to die for your country, supporting you know, the Constitution and defending us from enemies foreign and domestic, you are willing to die for your country, but now you're scared. You are scared and cowardly to talk about this. So I'm not just speaking to all of you in this room, I'm speaking to all those people that are gonna watch this online and watch it on YouTube. That's for later thought. 
from weather modification to weather weaponry. There, there's numerous reasons under Agenda 21 and tons of theories. But my job as an industrial hygienist is to make sure that I comply with the laws and enforce them. So it is unethical every day for all the other people that are out there that work in preventive health or even physicians that aren't speaking about this. They need to. So one thing I want to tell you is what you can do about it. The biggest hurdle that we have is disinformation sites. I never say them, but I'm going to today so that you know if anyone ever gives these to you as a reference to debunk you, it's Metabunk and Contrail Science. Those are two websites that are ran by a government shill named Mick West. And he is a computer gaming programmer who tries to tell you about persistent contrails. So somebody who isn't even credentialed in chemistry or physics or ecology, none of that, is trying to tell you that you're crazy. Like all federal agencies, is to hide these threats from the public. That's literally what their job is. And we have a system that's full of order followers. Is Kevin, who's, for those of you that haven't heard Kevin speak, CIA officer Kevin Shipp, who would not go along with the system that tries to mask these threats from the public. Because who would have the right to engineer our climate and make our force look like that? And that's that type of sky our society has learned to accept as normal. There's nothing normal about that. We've been accepted a lot of things, been programmed to accept a lot of things as normal. And we're marginalized by our media, by our meteorologists, by our climate science community. We're marginalized for trying to point out obvious truths. How big of an elephant in the room do we need when we see our skies grid patterned day in, day out, our forest?